All right, so step number one, factor the denominator. Uh, step number one, check and make sure the numerator oh, is right. less degree. And it is. X yeah. squared is smaller than X cubed. So right, second, every time. Second step, uh, we can take an X out of all three of these. So let's do that. Ooh, that's going to factor. I can already tell. It is. So that factors into X minus 2 times X minus 2. Yes. Which is really X minus 2 squared. You know what? But for partial fraction decomposition, it might help if you just went ahead and write it as X minus 2 times X minus 2. It because, might. Because when we change it, each piece has to get its own. But the second... The second piece is going to be x minus 2 squared, not just x minus well, 2. Well, okay, you're right. Okay. So we have a linear factor that's going to have x on the I bottom. I agree with you on that, okay. by the way. Yes. And then x minus 2 needs to be represented, right. but also we need to represent the degree x minus 2 squared. squared. Yeah. Every, right. every level of degree has to be represented when you do this. Right. So, so these are going to just be a, b, and c. Mm-hmm. And now our step is to basically figure out what to multiply by to get common denominators. So this x is missing x minus 2 squared. Right. Top and bottom because... We're getting common denominators. Common denominators. This is missing an x and an x minus missing 2. missing one of each. Yep. One of each, Mrs. K. Steve. This one is just missing the, the x. x. Yeah, there you go. That guy's almost the easiest to work with, actually. Right. Anyway. Totally. Okay, so <clears throat> now just so, taking the numerators, we have negative x squared plus 2x plus 4. And we can set it equal to the numerator on the other side, following all our rules of fractions. So. Yeah, I said we were going to show the other way, but I think the other way would be more difficult on this one. So let's just save okay. it. All right, let's no do problem. what we just did. So okay. what are some numbers that are helpful for us to plug in here? Uh, one of the numbers that would really be ideal here would be a two. A because two, two right. minus two is uh, zero. zero so. And and not only that, it takes out the A and B term when you do that. So it leaves us with, with C. Yes, that, that's like the ideal situation. Right. So put a two everywhere where X is. And remember, when you put a 2 in for x, you're eliminating one of our possible variables. Because we're saying, hey, x is 2. That's what x is going to be. Is that second, is that second lunch, Bella? That, yeah. OK, so a and b are, and b are, are, are gonna gone. going to go away. Yeah. So and, at any time you can eliminate two of those terms on your first step. That's a great thing that's to do. That's a great thing yeah. to do, okay? So two squared is four, that's negative four, plus four, that's zero. So we get four equals two C. Two C. So you divide both sides two by C two. Or not two C. <laughs> and you get C equals two. Now there's another number that we can plug in that will also be helpful here to get rid of some things, and that's going to be zero. Zero right there, yep. So but now we know what C is, so we can actually put a two there if we want. If we want to. Um, and it doesn't matter because two yeah. times zero will be zero, so. All right, so That's a lot of writing. Yeah, it is. So this time, these two go away, and we're left with, um, this will just be 4 on this side again. Oh, I picked a slightly different color. Oh, so that's, that's a little bit of a... An we, orangish. Yeah, okay, orangey. Sorry. Go back to mar maricino. Maricino. Okay, so negative 2 squared is 4. 4a. Four, four so 4a. So you divide that, and that gives us a equals 1. Okay, now we got two of them. Now, here's where it gets really weird. Right. We get to pick X, right? Right. And we already know two of the things we're looking for, right? Right, right. So really, that just leaves one thing left to find. We just need B. We just need B. So basically, we were allowed to pick anything we wanted to here when we picked 2 and 0. But we picked those because we knew they would work out well. Now we still have one more variable. We need to pick a number. There's not a good one that works. Nothing's going to make a zero or clean it up nice. Right. So we just need to pick any old one and 
I like one. I mean, if you have to pick a number, one works really great because... If we hadn't already picked zero, I would say to pick zero. I, I agree. But let's pick one. Okay. So... Now, while Mrs. Stevenson's filling this one in, we're just going to put one in for all of the X's. And then, but since also, we know that C is two and, and A, A is, is one, one we, we, put, put we put those in also. So you do have to pay attention. You gotta pay attention. We're solving this for a purpose. I mean, we need those values to help us. I hope you have enough room there, Mrs. K. Steve. I got it. Don't, okay. don't even worry about it. You're pretty amazing, it. so. Thanks. So now, nothing cancels out. We've just got a bunch of, like, you know, mathy, mathy stuff to yeah, do. Yeah, no. Uh, negative 1 plus 2 plus 4, that's 5. 5. five. This is one. negative 1 squared, which is 1, times 1 is 1. So 1 plus. This is negative 1 times b. So, so one, that's so actually, actually 1 minus, minus b. Oh, the whole thing went away. Oh, so I think I accidentally double clicked. Oh, you and double then clicked. Two times okay. one Plus is... two. So that's five. And so look, now, now again, complicated pre-calc problem boils down to a fairly simple algebra one problem there. So subtract the three and get two. So it's negative B, so B should equal positive, negative two. Positive, negative two. Negative, <laughs> positive B equals negative two. That's what I was going to say. Okay, and then we come back up here and fill in A, B, and C. So A was one, so that's one over X plus B, which, which is, is negative, negative two. two. So now we can put negative two on top. Right, or right, or you can put it there. Yes. Two. And then C is two. I just want to say, I don't know if you can hear this, but my, one of my favorite songs by Sigur Ross is playing right now, um, Saglapur. It's just really cool. I just, it's a complicated problem. There's a little levity. Okay. There. So, okay. And just to reiterate, we just took this and we're saying that if you took these three fractions and tried to get common denominators and add them together. You're going to get what we originally started with. Plus 2x plus 4. Hey, and a great way to check yourself. Is to do just that. No, or to graph, graph it. Graph it. Easiest by far. Yeah.